السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله Dear brothers and sisters, 
Let us have a taqwa in the Lord of the universe by obeying all of his command and, uh, and abstaining from his prohibition. May all, may all our efforts be rewarded in his word and hereafter. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. Today khutbah is about sabar or patience. In Islam, we believe that the trial or test is one of the way from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to assess or monitor his creatures. Every person will be tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and developing the trait of patience or sabar will make it easy for us to gain a place in Allah paradise in the hereafter. Let us try to understand the meaning behind trial and sabar as Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, Amazing is the affair of the believer, verily of all his affair is good, and this is not for no one except the believer. If something good befall him, he is grateful, in, and that is good for him. If something of harm befall him, he is patient, and that is good for him. Hadith recorded by Imam Muslim. Based on his hadith, we understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed his believer with several privileges. That is why, despite, despite any test that the believer face, be it a blessing or a disaster, he will attempt to understand it and appreciate the wisdom behind it. Every blessing is met with gratitude, while every disaster is faced with patience, for that is character of character of a mu'min. Allah has been exceptionally and merciful as to provide us with the tips to remind steadfast in the time of trial. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wasta'inu bisabari wa salah wa innaha lakabiratun illa ala al-khashi'in. And seek help in patience and as salah And truly, it is extremely heavy and hard except for humbly submissive. Submissive to Allah. Quran al-Baqarah, verses 45. Blessed brothers and sisters, in discussing of trait of sabar, it is important to reflect and understand the lips of those who have illustrated the spirit of sabar in facing the challenges that they were tested with. Among those that have been mentioned in history is the story of Prophet Ayyub as one of the most powerful narration taught to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an. Ayub was a prophet of Allah. It is said he was a descendant of Ibrahim and was extremely wealthy. He had plenty of livestock, cattle, and crops, many children, and beautiful houses. Ayub was devotee of Allah. He was engaged in constant remembrance of Allah, giving charity to, it to the poor in such an extensive way that it is narrated that an angel said, The best creature on the earth today is Ayub, Ayub a man who noble character, who display excellent patience and always remembers his generous Lord. He is an excellent model for a worshipper of Allah. In return, his Lord has blessed with him a long life and plenty of riches. Yet he is never haughty or selfish. His family his servant, as well as the needy and the poor, share, the poor share in his good fortune. He feeds and clothes the poor and buys slaves to set them free. He makes those who receive his charity feel as if they are vowing him. So kind and gentle is he. Ayub was tested in all his riches, losing everything he had, possession, children, then he was tested with regard to his body until there was no part of his it that has healthy except his heart. Everybody around him shunned him, friends, relatives, even strangers. He was left alone on the edge of the city. There was no one who treated him with a compassion except for his wife. He took care of him. He lived instead of indigency, sickness for 13 years. 14 or 18 years, depending on the narrations. The prophet of Allah, Ayub, had, had the utmost patience. He is the best example of that. So much, so much that Allah apprised him in his glorious Quran. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. 
وخذ بيدك اصدق ثم فضرب به ولا تحنث إنا وجدناه صابرا نعم العبد إنه أواب Truly we found him patient How excellent a slave Verily he was one repeatedly turning back to Allah Quran Surah Sa'id verses 44 Yazid bin Mu'asharah said When Allah tested Ayyub a.s. with the loss of his family, well and children and he had nothing left, he started to focus upon remembrance of Allah. And he said, I praise you, the Lord of the Lord, who bestowed his kindness upon me and gave me well and children. And there was no corner of my heart that was not filled with attendance of those world worldly things. Then you took all of that away from me and you emp emptied my heart and there is nothing to stand between me and you. If my enemy Iblis knew thee of this, he would be jealous of me. The Quran teaches us, the, the Quran teaches us that Ayub said, وَأَيُّبَ إِذْ نَادَى رَبَّهُ أَنِّي مَسَّنِي الضُّرُّ وَأَنْتَ أَرْحَمُ الرَّاحِمِينَ And remember Ayub, when he cried to his Lord, Verily, adversity has touched me, and you are the most merciful of the merciful. Al-Anbiya, verses 83. Later, come, came the answer of Allah. وَيَرُزُقْهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبُ وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلُ عَلَى اللَّهِ وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلُ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ بَلِغُ أَمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ بَلِغُ أَمْرِ قَدْ جَعَلَ اللَّهُ لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدْرًا And if we answer his call and we, we remove the distress that was on him, we, we restore his family to him and the light thereof along, them, along with them as a mercy from ourselves and a reminder for the all of for the all those who worship us, Al-Anbiya 84. Dear brothers and sisters, the story of Prophet Ayub is a lesson for us regarding the true meaning of trial and sabar. Sometimes when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests us, some of us will whine as time. In fact, some will even blame fate and so on. There are also those who assume that they are tested because they are not loved Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They, they are not Allah by they are not loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that Allah is not pleased uh, them with them. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked by Sahaba, Ya Rasulullah, who is the person who is given the greatest trial? The Prophet said, The prophets, then those who follow them. A creature will be tested suitable with his level of faith. If his faith or iman is strong, then the, the trial is heavier. If his faith is weak, then he will test it appropriate to level of his iman. Hadith reported by Ibn Majah. Thus, when you are being tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it doesn't mean that Allah hates us, but it could very much be the reverse. Sometimes a person is tested even though he is one of his dearly loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The test is as a kafara or an expiation for his past sins. Let us study another hadith from Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No Muslim is afflicted with any harm, poverty, accident, anxiety, sadness, illness or grief, or even pricked by the thorn but that Allah will remove his sin because of it. Hadith recorded by Imam al-Bukhari. Dear brother and sister in Islam, after understanding the trial from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a mu'min, for a mu'min, the question that follows is how can we instill sabar when we are tested? How can we develop resilience? The way to do so is as suggest, suggested by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a hadith which means Look at the person below you and not the person above you because that is more appropriate for you not to belittle the nikmat Allah has given you. Hadith recorded by Imam Muslim. 
Dear Jama, when we feel that the trial we face are too heavy for our shoulder to bear, just look at those whom Allah have tested with far greatest test. We should hand be, good, be a grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, for the blessing He has showered upon us. Despite the heavy burden of the trial that we face, there are many other blessings that Allah has bestowed upon us continuously. Another aspect of sabr that we need to pay attention is to the resilience needed by an individual and the community to achieve a dream and to attain success. Just as show sabr is needed to face trial, sabr is also needed to achieve our dreams and hopes, whether it is for this life or the, or the hereafter. In this world, one cannot achieve one's dream and fulfill one's objective in life without having sabr. A person, who ha a person who has sabr will be successful, and the reverse applies as well. When, when we look to ourselves as a student, the word of sabr is meaningful. Many obstacles during the study life sometimes make us less hope and less productive. There are many problems. The complex problems come and go. Problem with the progress of study, problem with the data experimental, Maybe problem with maybe some with problem with the supervisor that always busy who, who always busy and even problem with the, our family due to less time less time for them. Once again, having sabr is the power, power powerful key to success in your study. At time, the trip and fall, but they don't wait for a long time to pick themselves up and rise again. At time, they make mistake but they do not hesitate to correct this mistake and make amends. At time, they have cut and braces, but they strive to heal their injury quickly. Oftentimes they fail, but they don't surrender and admit defeat, nor do they give up. Dear brother and sister, just look at the life of Prophet Muhammad wasallam in his, his 10 years of prophethood, when he was fermented perfectly spreading the message and meeting with the leader from different clan in a bid to find a more appropriate place and town to move to. There were those who shut down his request and there were others who met all sorts of demand. Rasulullah did not give up despite seeing his repeated attempt not bearing desire, the desire, the desire result until finally Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Help him met with people of Yasrib who will come and follow him. Brother and sister, the story that I have just shared clearly depict the importance of having sabr, whether it is not overcome the challenges, the challenges in, in life or to attain success. I'm sure that every one of us pretend today has his own dreams. Some of us dream of success in our career, studies, and happy life, and happy family life. While maybe some brothers and sisters still continue to pray and constantly build sabr in order to get a good wife and a husband for a bright future life. Whether our hopes and dreams are, let us strive to never neglect them, continue to strive diligently and with sabr and believe that we, we will one day attain what we desire. Be confident that Allah is always with those who are sabr. At the same time, don't ever stop making dua to Allah, asking Him to grant us sabr in chasing our dreams for His word and hereafter, as Allah say in Quran. وَمِثْلَهُمْ مَعَهُمْ وَرَحْمَةً مِنْ عِنْدِنَا وَذِكْرَا لِلْعَابِدِينَ And whosoever has taqwa of Allah, he will make a way from him to get out from every difficulty. And he will provide him from sources he never could imagine. And those that whosoever put his trash in Allah, then he will suffice him. Verily, Allah will accomplish his purpose. Indeed, Allah has set a measure for all things. Quran, Atalak, verses 3. 
Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'anil Azim wa nafa'ani wa iyakum bima fihi min ayati wa dhikril hakim wa taqabbala minni wa minkum tilawatahu innahu wa sami'ul alim aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah al-azim li wa lakum wa lisa'il al-muslimin wal-muslimat wal-mu'minin wal-mu'minan fastaghfiruhu fa ya khawza al-mustaghfirin wa ya najatat ta'ibin الحمد لله الذي جعلنا من المسلمين ورزقنا من الطيبات أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلا يوم الدين أما بعد فيا عباد الله اتقوا الله فقد فاز المتقين قال الله تعالى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما Dear brothers and sisters the bliss of Ramadan has come upon us and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said he called Ramadan سحر الصبر he said that Ramadan نصف الصبر Ramadan is half of sabr the scholar said the reason Ramadan is half of sabr is because sabr consists of three parts being patient with obedience, patient with restraining yourself from disobedience, and being patient with the decrees of Allah that are difficult. So let us actively engage in this month of training in patience, enduring the various aspects of patience, such as self restraint, self discipline, gratitude, and perseverance. Embrace the blessing that Allah has obliged us to engage in and reap the benefit and reward of cultivating the skill that we can apply even beyond Ramadan. May Allah give us topic and hidayah and good, uh, good health to finish this holy month. Allahumma gfir lil mu'minina wal mu'minat wal muslimina wal muslimat al ahya'i minhum wal amwat innaka sami'un qareebu mujibu da'wat رَبِّ <تصفيق> ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا ذب النار سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين أقيم الصلاة.